Recap of I guess what we covered, and as you can see, we still left March seventh there. So for all practical purposes, we're still kind of stuck in time there. Um, uh, again, the, the budget's driven by our goals: uh, programmatic enrollment, demographics. We do have uh, issues of capital, and one of the things we're dealing with are external factors of assessment changes within the district. Uh, our assessments have dropped and will continue to drop. Um, within the existing staff, there will be new elective opportunities at the high school and middle school. We are piloting a UPK program at Viola. There are two teachers in for that. Um, new special ed classes, we're bringing children back primarily from BOCES placements. And we're also uh, changing some learning spaces, really uh, K-8. Uh, every, all of the buildings are getting some changes which are being funded through the budget. We'll get into those. As far as operations and facilities improvements, it's the last phase of our network upgrade. There's money in the budget to finalize that. Um, we are going to, starting with this budget, we're, and we're gonna keep recommending that each year we do a small project of about $100,000, mainly because those needs are always there and also because the state gives an incentive that they'll give you the aid the next year on one project a year if it's 100,000 or less. So it turns out the Viola PA system is our most needy, and it'll come in around that amount of money. We also have a little over $600,000 in the budget, the budget itself, uh, for the uh, replacement of the roof over the high school pool, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, did uh, realize some damage in recent windstorms. Uh, and we also are going to refurbish the high school pool, which is something that needs to be done every dozen or so years. We're gonna drain the pool, recoat it, uh, also paint the pool, uh, exterior, uh, the whole room, as well as the gym is going to be redone at the high school. So the high school is going to be getting a lot of, a lot of TLC. Over the last five years, really, uh, how we budget in schools has changed. Um, the tax levy used to be the last thing you would know. Now it's the first thing you know, or at least the maximum tax levy is the first thing you know. So we know this before we even start looking at uh, the cost of programs or anything else because it's driven by CPI and right now that's about the fifth line down the blue 1.26 percent so it is less than a two percent uh, CPI we have no growth factor this year that's why the first number is 1.00 in blue um, so really that 1.26 yields about a 1.2 percent tax levy increase because our debt is pretty much the same so we know the maximum tax levy we can go out for without requiring a supermajority is a 1.2% uh, increase. And we did, did build the budget using that full increase. Um, as with uh, all public schools, the largest expenditures are salary and benefits. Um, this provides for contractual increases uh, for all our staff. All our staff have contracts, um, so we don't have to uh, guesstimate what uh, potential increases will be. This moves people. There are a few retirements that are factored that we already know about. Um, but for the most part, it's keeping existing staff in place outside of those changes. Um, we'll go through the, some of the specific line items. Benefits, kind of a tale of two cities. A decrease in retirement costs offsets a large increase in health insurance, fortunately. Because the first thing we heard was the health insurance. But fortunately, the, the retirement system rates are going to offset that. And here you can see it, 7% increase in health. But the total increase in benefits only 2% because those other areas are going down, uh, uh, primarily TRS and ERS. 
And again, uh, since we covered these before, here we didn't even have to scale the bar charts to make them look like big changes. Even using 13 million as a base, uh, these are very large changes. And we did want to show you what a rate is that we're paying um, for family coverage. Uh, the district covers 85% for both individual and family, and the rates are now for next year, actually for uh, 2017, uh, factoring in. And we're factoring in a growth for 2018, too, so we're, we're actually uh, looking at rates that are going to be pushing 30000 for a family, of which we're covering 85%. Special education, um, there were two areas of growth last year when we started the budget. Special ed and transportation, in both cases, we not only slowed the growth, but we actually were able to bend the curve down a little bit. Um, reason for special ed, um, really by bringing in higher cost students into the district that are currently being served in both these private settings. Uh, that's saving the district uh, money even after factoring in the cost of uh, staff. And uh, we had looked at our physical therapy costs, which have been growing, but we feel a 1-0 employee can cover the needs uh, at a much cheaper rate than we're currently paying through as an itinerant through BOCES, mainly because we're being charged for travel time and not really getting all the efficiencies. So those two uh, are really the main reason for our special ed reductions. And you can see we were on a, you know, a clip of growing expenditures and a uh, big jump in 15 and 16, but 16, 17, and 17, 18 have really slowed the growth down there. And again, we're going quickly through this because these were covered before the uh, uh, power Excuse me. Yep. I'm over here. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Voices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have a question about special ed, but I have sure. to wait until the end. That's all right. We're here. We're because here. I have, since the presentation, heard uh, some concerns about the fact that there's not enough money available for special ed. Um, the first one is, do the parents have a right to refuse their child coming back? Well, I'll defer. I mean, everything goes through the CSE process, so the parents are part of it. Yeah, the parents have the same rights under the Part 200 regulations they have for any special education placement. They have the right to say that. They have the right to say no and say they want to think about it. And then tendency. Yeah, just like extending. There's no difference. There's no difference between a post placement versus an in-district placement versus a private placement. The parent always has the same rights. Okay, and then um, the training, of, will there need to be additional training of our teachers who accept some of these special, so is that, uh, how long does it take for that training, is that costly, is that, how efficient is it going to be? Um, I don't have the specifics on exactly how long the training will be yet, um, but certainly, you know, we've done this before. Where we've created new classes and we've had very successfully at Montebello in middle school three or four years ago. Um, and so, you know, the same training that a, a teacher in a BOCI setting would get, is that same training is available to any of our teachers. So our job is to make sure they get it um, and that they're prepared to, to work with the students they have in front of them. And so we will need to have some of our teachers be trained, have received additional training over the summer for this. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, there will be dozens and dozens of teachers across the district will get training during the summer, I'm sure our special educators will. And how about other resources, um, things like the CABIS or the ABBA therapy, is that going to be provided at a similar level? Yeah, we have a number of staff who are ABA trained and certified now. Uh, so it's really going to depend on how many students across the district need that sort of support. We have students who need that sort of support now. Uh, so there really isn't any huge difference. We're not talking about bringing back dozens of uh, children. For the most part, we're talking about students who are already in our schools now. They just happen to be attending the BOCES class in one of our schools and we're paying tuition to BOCES for that to happen. You know, there's no reason why we can't provide us a high quality education to those students who are already here. Okay, and what about the ancillary services? Like, will there need to be additional you know, nursing supervision or will the nurses have an increased workload that they will need to have more time? No, I remember the nurses are already people. supporting those students who are in our buildings anyway. Yeah, right, but the students are in the building currently, but the BOCES students that you plan on going back, sometimes they have increased nursing needs as well, right, but, so, which can be quite significant. The point is, most of these students are already in our schools anyway. Right. So if you're a BOCES student in Cherry Lane, you're being supported by the Cherry Lane nurse. Now you'll just be supported by the Cherry Lane nurse while you're around Ramapo Central Classroom and classroom without a BOCES class. So there's no difference in terms of nursing needs. Part of the 
benefit, so to speak, of a reduced enrollment at the elementary level is that we have related service providers who have time to pick up additional students, these are the additional students. Okay, and um, I can't read my own handwriting. Oh, there we go. So I, well, I have something. <laughs> well, I have, I have something too. So I think what we're looking at, what was sent to us today was from SEPTA, and I, I think I noticed you weren't copied on it, so I don't know if it was forwarded to you. I think it was sent to us and Dr. Adams. Um, I guess the key thing here is, can we, can we get the same answers that you're giving to, to the SEPTA group and, sure. and, and let the them case. know that their concerns are being addressed and that will be taken care of? I know the PBS administration is in regular contact with the SEPTA leaders, so we'll make sure that they have yeah, there's a list of about today. 10 or 12 questions in this email that I think will maybe make them feel a little bit better and put them at ease a little bit, because we already have BOCES classes in our buildings. We already have BOCES teachers, BOCES students, teachers taking care of them. I mean, nurses taking care of them. I just think that if there's just some other questions, too, as to why the, why the reduction, and I think some of those answers will help. Right. And again, I would point out, if you go back a slide, Anthony, mm -hmm. maybe two slides. We saw a reduction about four years ago because we've done this before. So periodically, we look at our programming, our staff, and <coughs> part of that reduces enrollment at the elementary level is it frees up staff and allows us to be creative with special educators. Instead of accessing special educators, we decided, you know what, let's do something different that supports the needs of students and has a benefit of lowering the amount of money that the public pays to most. So to us, it's a, it's a win all the way around. And, and I, I guess finally, I guess I would just ask, so it's not, we're not looking at, how many students approximately would you say we're looking at? 10, maybe 12. So Most of them are already in our school anyway. Clearly, if there was a need for additional psychologists, or any, any other position, PT, OT, whatever it may be, that will be taken care of based on the needs because that's based on the IEP. So I just want to make sure. Okay. So that's all some of this as well. Yeah, we're Thank looking you. at we've, we've done this before. We do this regularly. There's really no, there's no substantial difference here. We're not overhauling our special education programming. We're creating a couple of new classes. Okay, I have a couple of questions on that topic, Steve. I actually was in attendance in the last um, special education PTA meeting last Monday, so some of these, I haven't had a chance to read the email yet, but some of that came up in the meeting, obviously. Um, one concern was how many students will be in the classroom, how many classrooms are we constructing for these students? So in other words, the density, I heard you say 10 to 12, that's not in one classroom, I'm assuming? No. Divided on two classrooms. Okay, so I wanted to verify that because I did share that we were told seven last time, and I shared I didn't hear 15 in one classroom, but that wasn't the case. The other concern was some students that actually have been getting services outside. The parents have already received correspondence to the fact that they're going to be moved in in district. Uh, the concerns about that will they be able to get the same level of services um, when? Historically, those services have not been provided here. And the other concern is what happens in the summer months when they normally are able to go to those programs and now we don't have that in the summer. Well, we have students in district now who get 10 months special education services in one of our schools and then go to BOCES or, or another placement for their summer services that would remain unchanged. Any parent always has the right to say, I prefer one placement over another. That's part of the, the right that any parent has. But in my experience, having done this in terms of special education programming in multiple districts, it's very rare for uh, large numbers of parents to say, I don't want my child in his or her home school. I shared that. They, they told us that most parents prefer their children to be here. But some of the parents present didn't feel that way. So I want to make sure that the final say is not going to be to force the child to come back against the parents' will. We will give them, as an administration, the evaluation we see and what we see is going to be provided and that we feel um, is suitable and it's up to the parent at the end to make that decision. Yeah, at no point have you ever heard any member of the administration say that we don't respect the, the opinions of the rights of parents. It's you know, what we do and we remain unchanged in this case as well. So we're assuring our parents the final say is for the parent. Okay. 
<laughs> and full year services are also determined by the IEP. I this know because my son had full year services almost mm -hmm. his entire time in this district, and it was never denied based on the needs of the students. And that's still the same, and that was still continued. We bring the students back here from BOCES all the time to celebrate. It's something that is a wonderful, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to be a part of as an administrator to, to celebrate with the families and the teachers and kids that achieve success and are able to return to their home school. Um, so we do this regularly. This is not something that's necessarily new. It's just a group in that issue project. But we're also aware that we can't serve every child depending on those needs as best as <coughs> another location at home. So there are, depending on their... Yeah, we're still budgeting over $11 million in tuition and reading services for students who will be serviced outside the school. So that will always be the case. Thank you. In the next area, functionally your transportation again this is an area historically growing much greater than cpi uh slowed down uh, the growth and actually you see a decrease primarily by coordinating the non-public and public school calendars so we're only transporting on days the public schools are open we eliminated multiple bell times uh for drop-offs and we did do some consolidation with some of our neighbors for both non-public and special ed routes uh, where a number of districts were all going to the same school and uh, we're kind of uh, joining to say uh, realize those costs we're charged by child from most of instead of by bus so uh, we're able to share those costs same kind of story as with special ed you'll see years of growth 500,000 pretty much a year over the last four or five years and now uh, for 17-18 we, uh, we're seeing that slowing down and going uh, in a good direction. So we think that's these are uh, achievable long-term. Uh, you know, we <coughs> this growth has slowed down. And we can keep it at these kind of levels, with just now normal growth on that base. Uh, buildings and grounds. Even though you see a large increase there, the actual there's really two reasons. We have to, about two hundred forty thousand dollars is due to the painting of the pool area, painting of the gym, which are one-time expenses, but also. If you look at what we were actually spending in B&G over time, it, it was closer to what we're budgeting this year. So we actually feel this is getting us more in line with our actual expenditures. So we think 3.4 million is what you're going to see as the new, the new number uh, to meet our needs. Uh, um, again, we, there is an increase in building repair costs, but really the main thing is that we're bringing our budget in line with what we're actually spending in these areas. We do a great job keeping our facilities uh, in line, but we don't see the need to have to do budget transfers. We, we're just going to plan on to begin with. And even though this year we're doing the pools, it's a big district. There's always going to be things that are expensive that we take on each year. So uh, we think 3.4 million is our new normal there. Technology, the main reason is there's one time cost. So we do think this is something that will go back down. So the two areas of growth that you see here one is uh, a new normal 3.4 and we think the other is going to bounce back down so looking at a budget across multiple years which we are going to eventually show you a five-year budget uh, you know we're planning that out once we get the state aid figures you'll you know we do feel good that we have cost containment uh, and we should have uh, control of these budget lines going forward plan balance is something we prudently uh, put in place to pay for the first few months of the year um, we wait for our taxes to come in mid-September. We obviously have special ed summer school, uh, and even the first teacher payroll is well before we get our tax money in. So it helps. We don't have to borrow money. If you go to a lot of districts, they talk about tax anticipation notes. Borrowing money in anticipation of the taxes. We have not issued those um, for decades, and I don't see any need that we have to do that for the near future. So. This provides us the cash flow we need to keep operating. And even though that shows a decrease, really, there was a one-time reason that it went up in 16, 17. 2.1 is what's, what's going to be our continual uh, uh, issue here. Um, if you compare the revenues here, we'll go down this revenue chart. Um, plan balance. There's a slight increase in unclassified revenues, rentals. That's the insurance recovery we that we're going to use to help partially offset so that 2.8 going to 3 million state aid those are figures from the governor's proposal 
we are quite comfortable with those numbers. We think there will probably be a slight increase. And uh, when we first put this together, it was March 7th. Interest income we're going to relook at also when we look at uh, future <coughs> revenue. Uh, there was an increase by the Federal Reserve in interest rates that will positively impact the school district. There was a time interest income was almost a million dollars in this district when interest rates were higher. So we think that number will eventually grow also. Um, but if you compare right now, and this was as of March 7th, our revenues and our expenditures were out of balance. Uh, to the tune of uh, five hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars. So, you know, we expect to close that gap. The budget is kind of an evolutionary process. Um, we expect to hear more well, on the expense side, and we do expect to hear more from Albany, as well as possibly looking at our interest income. And the April fourth meeting, we're going to close that gap uh, for the, the board. But you know, as we put this together. And as we looked at expenses that we wanted to keep, and we looked at a tax cap with a hard 1.2%, you know, um, now we have to find the revenues to support that budget. There are some things that have come in since, uh, a, a, a legal settlement, and some other things that we can also look at for funds. But we think state aid and interest income will be where we get that from. Um, so really, that's the uh, revenue story. This is where we kind of were leaving off uh, last time. So everything now uh, is kind of new areas. One time insurance recovery is why unclassified revenues went up. Um, state aid, we're using the governor's proposal. Building aid has gone up as we've funded more projects recently from the capital reserve. And the use of reserves is the tax certiorari money that we've been required to bring back. As tax certioraries roll off, we're required, if we had money set aside for them, to bring them back. So um, this will be one of the last tranches from that 575000 to 313000 Yeah, uh, we have a budget, and then we also have long-range issues. Um, in 2007, the district voters approved the capital reserve of $8 million. Uh, so the district hasn't borrowed money we don't borrow tax anticipation notes. We, have, we don't borrow to improve our buildings. It's a very good story to be able to tout that we are we have low debt here. Uh, the reserve in 2007 funded the things you see there: roofs, uh, Viola Courtyard, turf field, various other improvements. I know that also some uh, uh, plumbing work at uh, Slotsburg. Um, we only have 1.7 million dollars left from that $8 million. Uh, we're recommending, but the voters have to agree, the board has to agree, voters have to agree. Air handlers at the high school is almost a million dollars. If uh, you go back in time, the board actually approved an architect to design that because we said that's the next big thing we need to deal with. These are original to the building. Um, we would be compromising um, you know, the air intakes if we tried to get too many more years out of them. It's time. Uh, and then we feel district-wide, a, with all the technology we're loading into the system and how much we're all dependent on it and the electricity needed, we're recommending generators for the, the secondary schools and also for Hilburn. Um, Hilburn, because we have all the central <coughs> servers here, and obviously the high school and middle school are our biggest buildings. Eventually, our goal is to put generators uh, in every building that could at least get through the school day. Um, what, what would be the estimated cost for that? That's about s between all three, 650 to 700,000. So about 250 per um, to do that. And it's been a growing need in the sky as we started talking. It's like, yes, we do want the elevator to work too. Yes, we do want, uh, you know. So as, as you start going down the list of things you want to make sure operate when the power goes out, you know, the, the generator, uh, needs get greater and the costs get greater. We did do a building, we're required every five years to do a building condition survey. That was completed actually during 15-16 school year. And the wish list came out to about $17 million. So not the wish list, the need, the list of needs for the district. And really none of this is necessarily, uh, you know, blitzy. This is meat and potatoes type work. This is roofs primarily. You'll see the list as we go through it. 
Uh, but 17 million is what the, the needs were listed for the next seven to 10 years. And even if that, a little sticker shock, I can promise you if you're sitting in other public school districts, they'd be looking at numbers much, much larger than this. So I actually think this is also a sign that the district has kept up their assets and um, it's really something we feel we can manage that uh, with a little plan. Um, where does 17 million go? Roofs are very expensive. And they even, you know, 20 years is about 20 to 25 is all you can expect. So, you know, almost half of this is roofs of three buildings. So 17 million, seven million is there. Generators to finish all the elementary schools, fire alarms, you can see the list there. but. You know, not too many things that are necessarily uh, you're cutting a ribbon on. You know, it's, it's, it's keeping what we have in good shape and able to last another generation. It's prudence. And um, our feeling is if, you, um, if we don't plan ahead for it, we'll probably have to do a bond issue or deal with things as they break. Um, so the question is, how can we fund $17 million? We kind of circled a wagon and said, well, how can we do this? In this budget, we have $700,000. So if we do that for 10 years, that's $7 million right there. And since these are needs that go out 10 years, we said, again, without increasing the budget, there's $7 million that's taken care of. Where's the other $10 million comes from? Well, there's a few options. One is to do another capital reserve, like it was done in 2007, for $8 million, this time $10 million. If so, there's the $17 million, our needs are now set. Now the question is, where does the $10 million come from? We have a budget almost $140 million. If one half of 1% is unspent every year, which you know, prudence would say there should be, you know, we should plan on uh, having money left over at the end of the year, that will fund $10 million over 10 years. Um, so that's why we're saying not necessarily, we think this will just come from lean from operations. And that's really what has occurred over the last decade, that's where the $8 million came from. Each year, the board, at the end of the year, would be asked to put so many dollars into the capital reserve. Um, realize there's two steps to, even if the, if the board wanted to go this route. First, the voters have to approve setting up a capital reserve. And then every time you want to spend money in the capital reserve, you have to go back to the voters. So it's not like any district's getting a blank check by setting up a capital reserve. You have to keep going back to the voters to spend the money. And we're obviously recommending that. Other options, if we didn't do a capital reserve, we could bond the full 17 million. Obviously, this would add debt to the district. Uh, as a reminder, we're dealing with what we're calling a little bit of a, a cliff uh, in that we have debt that's existing that will go on past the state aid related to that debt. That's 2019-20 school year. So this would only compound that problem. Um, or we could set up a $17 million capital reserve and not put any money in the budget for 10 years. Uh, we think that's a little too much to expect to get out of operation. Again, we, we think we're biting the bullet this year by putting 700000 in. We can keep that line item flat uh, and that will achieve $7 million. So that really is our recommendation on how to deal with uh, our needs that are out there. It'll be in slow bite-sized pieces that we'll spend the $17 million over the next decade. Uh, only 700,000 is planned to be spent in the next budget. Um, next steps. Both the revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Can we go back to the 17 million? For sure. Yeah. All right. So what you've got here is about 12.6. Okay. Um, if you want to add in even the projects on your prior screen at 1.7, you know, for the generators and for well, I actually, you shouldn't have to. This would be, be yes. Yeah, so these I are the big to, ticket items. Right. There are definitely, obviously, we. I'm just trying to see where we get to 17. Okay. And I'll, um, <laughs> I guess we can give this the next time we ever. Yeah, we'll we'll share this listing with you. Basically, we there's pneumatic controls. Uh, you know, there's other things, but the list I have here is every building has items in it. The bottom line is 17. So this will get to the board obviously before our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Right, because if I'm looking at this, I mean, it's yeah. a, a fairly large discrepancy between 17 and 12 and a half. Yeah, I, I hear you. And what, what you'll see as you get to, and I'm, I'm sorry that you don't have this right in your hand now, 
when you look at the more detail, you'll see like twenty thousand dollars for every building for outside lights. Doesn't sound like much, but all of a sudden, you know, that's fine. Okay. yeah. So that's what. Yeah, they're kind of just small. I, I would like to right. That yeah. Bring it now. Yeah, but that's detail. <laughs> yes. Just. But that's very reasonable. So you get the full picture. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You got it. Question on the capital. Yes. Um, so we know the the second high school group because we've been having sessions about that. Mm -hmm. Can you just like fill us in on the other schools, uh, other two schools' condition, the urgency, um, and maybe the breakdown? Again, uh, the urgency. The good thing is it's not urgent. It's a seven. You know, we're, we're putting a seven to ten year plan out there. The middle school roof is under warranty for how many more years? And I'm just reaching out to John Powell who is here. And five, five more years. So we would expect we would not do the middle school roof for that. The high school four more years. If we're doing about eighty. We're doing about fifteen percent of the high school roof. Right now. And eighty-five percent of it we can wait four years for. Cherry Lane, same thing. It's under warranty. It'd be three to five years. So, specifically, the middle school, 2.4 million is the middle school roof. Um, high school roof um, is three, and Cherry Lane 1.2. So, um, and we would tackle all those at the same time, or we prioritize which one first, since they um, all seem to have. Expectancy? Well, the great thing is we have the freedom to plan. Um, we're actually doing a little bit of roof work in the next year using a somewhat different system than we've used before. So we kind of want to see how that works. So there might be one of your reason to buy in bulk. If we like our new system, we might decide to bid it all out at once. Um, so, but I think it's a little premature to say, I, I'm not able to answer right now. How so exactly we, we do we get back at the, the 50, almost 50% 50 stated back for right. over 15 years over 15 on all years. of us? Right. On that system. Yeah. Like yeah. Yep. By the way, I just realized that the, the, another big chunk here that's not listed here, Hillburn, the roof here has got to be replaced. And that's not on this list. So that's 500,000. Foundation, we have some foundation issues in front. That's another. So there's almost 900,000 Hilburn. It's not listed there. So, 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 so we know this is a lot. We obviously we're hoping to start this discussion more at seven. Um, you know that um, we know the needs are there. Um, we know with a little planning we can, can deal with it. We don't think the district needs debt. And fortunately, we have time. We're not like sitting here going, this has to be done now. Um, we would fund this over, you know, the next eight, eight or nine years. We would just look for the authority to fund it. Um, and uh, obviously, we'll have more detail for the board at the next meeting um, on the capital reserve, as well as closing the budget, uh, reviewing revenues, which will have more information on retirements. We do have this. Gap, 577,000, and then um, we probably should talk a lot more on the capital projects which we'll do on April 4th uh, to decide the direction the board wants to go on that. So with that, any summary, that's where we're at as of now. A budget that's slightly less than 2% growth for the tax levy of 1.2. And again, we plan on bringing the, the gap together in the next few weeks. I have a few questions. Of course. Okay. Uh, number one is clarity for some notes that I think I took last time, but if it was dark, I, maybe I know it was wrong. Um, when we were talking about buildings and grounds, yeah. what was the estimated cost for the pool and, yes. and the painting? Yes, you're right, because we didn't have it at that point. So uh, pool room uh, is 140,000. It's pretty much 70,000 for the pool bottom and 70,000 for the, the walls in the pool. So kind of equal. So 140,000 takes care of that. And the gym, to paint it is $80,000 to paint the entire uh, large gym. And then about another 20,000 to put up new uh, wall padding. So that's about $100,000 in total, okay. 80 and 20. Yeah, I, I certainly Something other than mm -hmm. that. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you for that clarity. You got it. Um, 
I just have some general questions. Sure. Can you just walk me through quickly the budget process okay. oh, yeah, thank in you. administration? You know what? Where? I should have started with that, and I had it on my list, and uh, we had discussed that. So my, uh, yeah, we meet, we meet with every principal. We um, we've asked them to prioritize what do you need done in your building. We obviously get feelings from them about the programmatic needs, and again, the every building is having some structural changes done to certain rooms uh, per those requests. We then we then look at our enrollments. Um, if we don't add UPK, we probably would have less kindergarten sections next year. Right now, we're, that's being filled with the UPK. So that's, that process goes on. Uh, we meet with facilities. We meet with transportation. Uh, we meet with special education, new placements. How many contingencies should we put in? We added contingencies for, uh, for special ed monitors. Um, that need you know, seems to be growing over time. So we meet, that's what we're doing in January and February. At the same time, we're going through the mechanics of, let's increase, you know, now Johnny's moved to step 12 to step 13, let's do that. So that we have the mechanical part that's going on, we have meetings about the needs that are out there, programmatic uh, as well as uh, physical, and that really takes up the month of January and early February. Okay, so, so just yeah. to back it up, the building principle, are responsible for the money from their respective buildings. Yes. Is that accurate? Yes, okay. very much so. What about down to the, to the department level? Who is actually responsible for, for line on this? Would I would have to defer to the high school principals. I know they decentralize it, but I, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. I know it's decentralized. I know they, okay. they do that. What, Again, more so as a what, secondary what school. What I'd like to understand yeah. is who in each building is actually reviewing all the different line items for all the different expenditures that happen throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Or if you're using more historical data, if you're you know, just using percent increases each year after year on certain items in the you know, general ledger, mm -hmm. um, you know, clearly there are changes that happen all the time. Yep. So that you may have a high, a high cost in postage 10 years ago that you may not have today. So I'm curious to know, and if you don't have it now, that's okay. Yeah. Um, but I am curious to know, who is actually looking at all these different areas and determining what is the proper cost? Yeah, and when we're sitting with the principal, we do look across three years, so they have that in front of them. Um, for instance, one of the things we know just anecdotally, the textbook line is going down because other things are you know, being used in little textbooks. And so it's so interesting you, you can kind of see that. Uh, but we do see, and in certain cases, we end up reducing lines down because we see historically we haven't used them. But um, as far as what occurs in the building, though, departmentally, I, I need to get that back to you. Yeah. My question regarding yeah. the Hilburn, um, yeah. um, that was not. Yeah, it was there. Yep. What is the status of that roof and um, the foundation you mentioned? Well, I mean, they both need to be dealt with in the next five years. I think the foundation we would deal with first, the yes, general the feeling that that's a priority. Yep. Yeah. We want to, there's a kind of a step process we want to go through. We, we need to do lead testing. We need to do some other kind of tests that need to be done. So um, lead as far as the paint is before we can do any work. And again, we're not dealing with anything where we structurally right now have a problem, but we do see things that we want to, we would be remiss not to put a plan together on. So I think they're looking at some drainage issues out front. It's obviously <coughs> it's affected by water. As far as the back roof, where are we at? How many years do we think we can get out of that? It's, it, it's been there for quite some time. I think now we've had a couple of leaks, so we're looking at it as far as the deterioration of the roof and the life expectancy of it, which we passed at that point. Yeah. Um, so it needs to be addressed with this. Yeah. We're looking at different style roofs too. I know there's a, at least two or three different. Being an historic building, I know it's kind of out of the way too. We're kind of limited. We might have to kind of do exactly what's there. Might really be 
for that for no reason. It's going to be dictated as to SHPO. Yeah. Are there restrictions? That was going to be Yeah, SHPO is right. the organization, yeah, right. historic preservation. You so. have to get permission for what's going to be put in. Yes. Out. We probably will lean to what you see is what you continue to see. One, it's out of the way, but two, we don't think that's where we can make an architectural statement. But yeah, we got to definitely protect it, and if we don't do anything, we're going to have a water intrusion issue. So, so there are recent <coughs> renovations done. Um, I noticed the front desk the area has been renovated recently. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So that kind of project, <coughs> what fund does that come out of? That's the that's the maintenance budget. That's a regular budget. Yeah. Not a capital fund. No. When we have to get a building permit, <laughs> when we have to get an architect involved, that's capital. Usually, you're getting Internal something that's over fifty to one hundred thousand dollars, or it's a structural issue. Um, or, you know, the state wants to see it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so there's some follow-up back to you. Um, one more thing: in sure. the past, um, residents could email questions. Um, is that still available for them? There was a site on the website. We'll make sure it is. If uh, I, I can't say right now it's up and running, but that sounds good. We'll make sure that's available as of tomorrow. Yeah, I'll put it right on the website. Are we on for April 18th, <laughs> or is that going to be the fourth? Fourth is our next meeting on budget. So not the 18th anymore. And the 18th. 18th is putting it to bed. Fourth oh, okay. is we should have the state budget. So we'll, uh, have the same yeah, we'll have more discussion of uh, um, other revenues, and obviously capital is going to consume a lot of our discussion on the floor. Yeah. So April 4th is the next one. Yep, next okay. budget meeting. Thank you.
and there was an exhibit in the uh, Suffern High School's library on Vietnam, and individual history classes visited the exhibit um, <coughs> in the two weeks that they were present. Um, USO is in the midst of planning spring week, and spring sports have started. So, um, History Honor Society will be presenting again to the Rockland County History Society on March 22nd at 6 45 p.m., which is tomorrow, and based on the project of Battle of Stony Point. Suffern High School's uh, Honor Society placed in the top three position in Rockland County. The conference took place on Valentine's Day, and all schools that attended have presented on subjects about Rockland County history. The location of the meeting will take place on 20 Zuka Road in New City. Uh, it is a very special eight-minute presentation that five of the society's members had developed, one of which happens to be me. And the History Honor Society would like to cordially invite all members uh, to attend this event. And a formal email was sent to all the board members about this event. On March 20th, there was a spring musical concert, and the members of the musical had a successful uh, district tour. The spring musical, Fiddle on the Roof, will be on uh, March 23rd to the 25th, and tickets are currently on sale. The annual STIR symposium will be on Thursday, April 20th, from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. in the Suffern High School Library. All uh, board members and Suffern High School faculty will shortly receive an email with all the necessary details. Also, uh, I would like to say a special congratulations to the Suffern Robotics team and wish them the best of luck at Nationals in St. Louis next month. Um, on March 29th, Suffern High School will be holding a college fair in the gymnasium from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Suffern High School Junior Prom will be on Friday, March 31st at 7 p.m. at Crown Plaza. The Instrument Petting Zoo will be on Saturday, April 1st at 9 a.m. in the high school. And uh, SHS uh, Guitar Festival will be on Monday, April 3rd at 7.30 p.m. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Thank you. She's very well behaved. Thank you. Thank you. The project was amazing. Thank you. Um, all right, 1.08 minutes of the special meeting of January 20th, 2017. Chair. Chair. Chairman Tan motion to accept those minutes as so stated. I'll make the motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I'd like to aye. call to 1.8 from recommended edit. Well, we're in, the, we're in discussion, so I mean, it's, it's alone, it's not all. Oh, Ready? Ready? Before the vote, I want to know what them. Okay, discussion? If, if I could just back up 30 seconds. Okay. Back up the video, take 30 seconds. Discussion? Sure. So on January 20th uh, minutes, there are um, three errors on how I voted. Um, basically, I'll just list the items and say what the correction should be. Um, on 2.01, approval of Peace and Garden Pilot Program, my correct vote was yay. And it's uh, cited as an abstinence, I'm sorry. Uh, on 2.02, .02, it was also incorrect. MLA for Apple Teachers Association, my correct vote is yay and it's showing as an abstinence. On 2.03, it is correct. On 2.04, it is also incorrect. My correct vote is yay, and it's shown as an abstinence. Five, six, seven are all correct. There's also an edit on the um, item regarding the NISPA Advocacy Institute Conference. It's a grammatical error. It's a um, Board of Education approving one. Uh, that the Board of Education approving is not correct, it should be approved. Um, also, if we didn't approve attendance or didn't disapprove attendance, we approved registration fees. So I'm recommending just changing the word attendance to registration fees. Thank you. Okay, so I'll call the question. Uh, all those in favor, see the by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Oh, sorry. Oh. Opposed? <laughs> aye. 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 Aye, aye. Okay. So, <laughs> I was I was a few seconds behind. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call. Let's call again. So okay. Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed. And I oppose because I think we should change it from attendance to registration. That doesn't make much sense to me. 
Okay. Um, and I so so all right. 1.0 1.09 minutes of the regular meeting of February 7, 2017. Chair, sure, obtain a motion to accept those minutes as so stated. Discussion, please. I'll, I'll, make I'll make it. Second part. Discussion. Yes, I would like to discuss. Um, I had sent out an email right now. Currently, what is written. Um, is though not originally included on the agenda, the Board of Education discussed the possible formation of a new committee. I think it would really help the public to understand what we were talking about there, and I don't think this one has sufficient clarity. So I would say, as I said in the email, that we should change it. We were talking about forming a committee that could evaluate various different superintendent tools. So I think that that means evaluation tools. I think that that needs a little bit more clarification. I had sent that comment out actually prior to the previous blackout meeting. Anybody else? Discussion? I uh, add my voice to that. Um, the name of the committee that we discussed uh, in the interest of transparency should be listed. It was the Superintendent Evaluation Committee. It's not personnel, uh, private matter, it's public, it's a tool. It's uh, regarding forming a committee to investigate available tools and select the best tool for the upcoming year. So. And in the past, we gave that amount of details, I don't know why. Just although not on the agenda is, is something I haven't seen in prior minutes either. I actually would like to add to that one little um, item. If we're going to um, start posting, although not on the minutes, we probably should have a public conversation about how um, items are getting on the agenda or not getting on the agenda, uh, because uh, advanced emails have gone out regarding this particular conversation and it just never got on the agenda. So I think that needs to be another discussion if we're going to start to become that technical. Thank you. Okay. okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Abstentions? Okay. Chair, I take a motion to accept the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting of March 7th, <laughs> the infamous blackout meeting. Um, <coughs> well, Craig and Parker are here, so they can't vote for this one. Right. So, right. Chair, I take a motion to accept those minutes as so stated. Second. Who was that? Matt? Teresa? Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Two. Thank you. Okay, superintendent's comments. <clears throat> Mr. Shattuck is here from the Crew Booster Club, and I think he left the bag for everybody. He was here last time when we had the blackout, did not have an opportunity to address the board, so I'd like to cede my time to Mr. Shattuck. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is David Shattuck, as the superintendent had mentioned, and I'm the president of the Suffern High School Crew Booster Club, the parent organization of the high school rowing team. I'm here on behalf of Jay Cochran, who happens to be visiting the college. That's what juniors do, right? Uh, to thank the superintendent and the Board of Education for the support and help securing the bridge funding for the, uh, help to help the team purchase four new windside racing shells. We were able to purchase uh, two four-person boats and two eight-person boats in time for the 2017 season coming up right now. Without your help, the Suffern High School crew team members would not have seen the boats until two, the year 2018, so we want to thank you. Over a year ago, Jay Kaufman and I met with Senator Carlucci to present our case for replacing some of our boats that are nearly seven years old. <coughs> Senator was receptive to our presentation, and he and his staff worked with the district's Director of Budget and Finance, Anthony Cachera, I think he's left, to obtain those boats. Uh, after a number of months of work, Dr. Adams, Anthony Cachera were able to bring the funding proposal in front of the board, months ahead of when the district would actually receive the funds from the Senate. Without the commi commitment and support from this board and the staff in the administrative offices, the team would, not be, would be using old and uh, unsafe equipment. The Suffern High School crew team has been a varsity sport since 2009. We started with only one boat and a dozen student athletes. Last year, over 90 students participated in the sport, with 50 rowers participating at the state competition and two boats going to the nationals competition in Ohio last year. 
Our success can be attributed to the support we receive from the high school administration, most notably Andy Guccion and the coaching staff. From the very beginning, we've been lucky to have Coach Craig Jacoby lead the team to many wins, graduating hundreds of students from the crew program. Craig combines the team's coaching skills of a football coach with his technical rowing expertise so that the team consistently wins many regattas each season. We are indebted to him for his commitment and to the students and the support of crew. Again, thank you, uh, Superintendent Adams, Board President Teresa Falco, DeFalco, and the rest of the board for your support. Lastly, uh, we welcome you to our annual friends and family regatta, West Point, on May 7th. I'll be sure to send you an email uh, so that you'll know when and where to, to attend. It's a, it's a really nice regatta. It's a beautiful location. I remember seeing a number of you there in prior years. So on behalf of Jake Hoffman, the crew team, and the crew board, we wanted to present you with those sweatshirts. Hope you get good use out of them and uh, have good thoughts about the team for this year in 2017. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the awesome questions. Um, it's a great, a great group of parents also. A great group of kids. Uh, I went to their fundraiser recently. And yep. It's a they're good, they're good, good, right really a great group of kids. Some parents in there. Yep. Some graduated parents. <laughs> to graduate, yes, to graduate high school. So I'm dragging out a piece of equipment. <laughs> you know, a big thing, trying to drag it downstairs, which is very impressive. But thank you very much. Thank well, you very thank much. You. And have a great season. Thank you. All right, public participation. This is public participation as action items only. That's the items listed behind me, which should be 0, 2.01 through 2.0. Three zero. This session will last 30 minutes. Um, if you would like to address the board, please step up to the podium, state your name, school affiliation. Um, three minutes to address the board. We could probably maybe move that a little bit because there's not a lot of people here. Uh, but again, pursuant to policies 1230, 1430, 1430, please don't address your questions with regard to, or, or to any specific either staff member or student. Action items only, 2.01 through 2.30. Okay, seeing none, I'll close that portion of the meeting. Okay, so we have to ask two action items. We have 2.01, um, 2.02, 2 2.03, and 2.04 are going to pull for individual vote as opposed to putting them in the action, I mean the consent agenda. Anything from two for discussion also? Right, well, we'll yeah, just deal yeah. with them individually. Which ones? Can you the read? first four. Two, one, two, three. Two, three. No, not three. Yes, three. Yes. Oh, yes, three. Sorry. Like and so as far as 2.05 through 2.30, I did not receive any requests to pull those for individual vote. Which ones? 2.05 to 2.30. Um, I did not receive anything. 2.05 needs to be pulled, please, dependent on what we decided earlier. And also 2.05. 2 uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we think this might be different. Recently approval of the kindergarten pilot program. Wait, you looking at the one that I got? Sorry. Can you scroll said, down? Uh, yes, yeah, same thing. Um, I'm going to pull them because I have to clarify that what's going on because it's extremely confusing. Well, no, five, six, and seven, all of them have to be pulled. <coughs> you, want, you, want, you want to pull all of them? 2.05, 6, and 7, and then I have a calendar question, 2.29. Okay, is, it, is it just a question, or is it, or is it a discussion? <coughs> a question, so there's a discussion. Do you want it to be pulled? We can have, you want it to be pulled then? Yes, I think that's what I've done in the past. Yeah. Yes, All right, so if we could, 2.01, I just want to make sure this is clear. I will pull them for individual vote and discussion. 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 
I, that's why I asked before. 2.10. I asked it before 2.10. Mm -hmm. And 2. And 2.29. Okay, so let's see. We get let's do the other stuff first. As far as the consent agenda, just want to make sure it's clear again. Consent agenda with respect to 2.11 through 2.28 and including 2.30. Everybody with me? So moved. Yeah. Okay, Chair, we can a motion to accept those as so stated. So moved. Teresa, second. Second. Frank. Any just get all those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. As well as abstentions. So we we'll just Okay, so let's go to this will do it in order. Okay. Two point zero one. Oh, can I do it individually? Yeah? Yes. Okay. And it's in order to do it. <coughs> it's in the right order. <coughs> All right, 2.01, Sherwood, can a motion to accept 2.01 as so stated? So moved. Second. Okay. We can keep that the same if we agree. That'll be Craig and Teresa? Yes. Okay. All right, discussion. Okay, so just clarifying again, we're rescinding the consent agenda for 2.10 and 2.28. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes
where there's this equally applicable tool that is free that we can use that really follows the same process and procedure as the other tool. So um, I think that this vote should not be for the PLS third learning tool, but rather for the NISBA superintendent evaluation tool. Thank you. Anybody else? Mine? Okay, so the um the um, action item reads that the Board of Education approved the board president to enter into a contract with PLS, third learning, regarding the superintendent's evaluation of an estimated not to exceed $600. First of all, the action item does not list for which year, does not specify for which year's evaluation, so that's definitely information missing there. We should not be voting without saying what is that tool being used for. Number two, it does not give us alternative tools to uh, vote on. Um, a discussion that's still really incomplete. So first of all, um, superintendent evaluation, as you all know as board members, is a, is a main part of our work as um, school board members. The tool is supposed to be approved every year um, and agreed upon by the school board and filed with the state education department with a deadline of September 10th. Our deadline to file this tool was September 10th of 2016. We did not file a new tool, thereby the existing tool would be the binding tool that we're supposed to utilize for the 16-17 school year evaluation. To make an exception, we were advised um, in discussions with um, other parties who can advise us uh, that we can all be in agreement to make an exception and um, bypass that deadline that we missed. In order to make that exception, we really should give all other tools um, a fair opportunity, especially when our state organization, NISBA, has an online tool that's comparable or better to the um, PLS third learning um, private company tool. As a matter of fact, the NISBA tool was um, developed to address all the issues that we've had with the existing tool including it provides for superintendent feedback and a pre-evaluation report that is um, submitted prior to any board members uh, performing their own evaluation in order to enlighten the board on information they may not be familiar with. Uh, it also includes on the online capability and uh, a printing capability, so it's either or. It comes as part of the services that we already pay for because of our membership dues to NISBA. So it's already covered and free of additional charges. Um, by stating that we vote only on one tool, we have um, bypassed the tool that's really worthy of consideration. We also, like I said, did not mention the time. Uh, any expense that is not in our current budget and we did not plan for in advance should should be um, discouraged, big or small. Uh, we were, oh, <laughs> And we're back. Okay, so, um, am I? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, I was in the midst of saying basically that my preference as a board member is to um, not spend money, especially if we didn't allocate it for that purpose and we didn't budget for it, uh, and to select a product that is free of charge and if there's any funds that are suggested in this vote to direct those funds directly to student value, uh, education instead. My next item is um, the privacy issue. This is a third party uh, private company. I would trust um, very private information to our state association before I would trust a uh, third party organization. And uh, lastly, the NISBA tool that's online and free of charge, included in our membership, um, took into account fellow board members' um, feedback from across the state of New York before it was designed. Uh, so I don't think it should be overlooked. Um, we also um, had um, discussed prior to this vote that we would form a committee um, to evaluate superintendent evaluation tools for the 17-18 school year. Um, if we bypass um, the NISBA tool for 16-17, we don't have the sufficient learning and training that it would take us to get used to the tool in preparation for 17-18. So we're hopping from the current tool to a new tool to a third tool possibly, if that's what the future committee uh, recommends. So hopping three years in a row is not a good idea. 
that I urge my fellow board members to consider a tool that's free of charge that's built in our membership when this organization that provides the same or better. Thank you. Any other discussion? Matt. Just for, for clarity, do we want do we want to just make sure everybody understands the cost, number one? Um, because my understanding is it's $1,800 annually for this proposed tool. Um, my understanding is also that there is A available, which would lessen the cost of the district. So if that's the case, let's you know let's make sure we're all aware of that. <coughs> and let's also be clear that what we're looking to approve tonight is not long term necessarily. It's really strictly for the 16, 17 school year. And regardless of if it gets approved tonight or not, we still will, my understanding is that we're still going to form a committee to come up with a proper tool the right way for 17, 18 and beyond. So, I mean, a lot of that's not clear from the minutes or from the agenda. So just want to make sure that everybody sitting here I understands all that. I personally don't have any information how it came up with the 600 figure. If you could shed some light to that, please. I did not receive any of that information. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, I'll just address a couple of the issues, a couple of the comments. Um, the first one is the, uh, it, it's, it was, we, I sent you the information with respect to this instrument back in November. I actually sent you a copy of the instrument, copy of the brochure that they had, and actually copy a video, which kind of shows you how the instrument actually works. The um, cost of it was $1,800. I think at a prior meeting, somebody said it was $8,000. It was $1,800 for the year. This is a year-long process. Um, the 600 is a prorated share because we're only paying for April, May, and June because you pay on a yearly basis. So the guy made it a prorated share. Okay. With respect to um, the funds, we have consultant fees, and I, I, I don't profess to say exactly where it's going to come out of and what have you. Um, I'm not the uh, the numbers or accountant for the district, um, but we do have a consultant budget. Okay, whether it comes out of there, I know there's money in there or not. Um, that's the information that I received. The other thing is, with respect to the um, um, with respect to the instrument itself, and and we've had an opportunity to actually review several instruments. The one that we have, this one, the NISBA one, and I don't, there may have been others that individuals may have looked at and evaluated themselves. So we have had, each member has had an opportunity to review um, items or, or different instruments. Um, the, the tool itself, this tool, it's not so much the tool itself, it's the process by which the tool is used. I think comment was made that NISBA is an electronic process. This was not an electronic process as this system is. In speaking with NISBA, NISBA's, NISBA's electronic process is a fillable PDF. So it's basically, that's the online process of it. It's a, it's a fillable, fillable PDF that you can then email to somebody like any other PDF. The process by which this company uses the electronic nature of it is everything is uploaded to the, um, to the tool, to this domain. And when I say everything, it's, it starts out with a superintendent in a self evaluation where he is self evaluating uploads too. And he can do this, this is why it's a year long process. He can do this throughout the year and periodically upload the evidence that he would use to say, this is why I am whatever score it would be. We would, in turn, once that process is done, this is if we did the year-long thing, so when we were extremely truncated portions should this pass, is once that's done, then there's, when the deadline is hit, then an email is generated to each board member for them to gain access to the instrument itself and to the information provided. At that point, each board member individually at home, in the car, I don't care where you are, you fill out and you do your own electronic um, evaluation. You hit submit or whatever it is, and it collates all of that information. It puts all of that information together. Um, it comes up with a, a um, and it depends on how you want the report to look, but it comes up with an instrument. It comes up with the results. Um, 
in speaking, again, in speaking with NISBA, their process doesn't do that. Their process, the, the electronic part of it is simply the fillable PDF, but whatever. So the other thing I had here, with respect to the committee, we did, I think, two meetings ago, maybe three meetings ago, we had a uh, discussion with respect to the committee. And I had asked the board members to email with respect to what they want to do with the committee. The committee is important. This is only for this year because if you look at it, it's only, it may not have the date on it, but we are approving it today, and it's $600. If the thing costs $1,800 a year, clearly it's just for this year. Um, with respect to the committee, no, I, I, and I've spoken to board members, there's no, I can't, I was put, can't put it on as an action item because I don't know what action to be taken. I had asked simply just, do we want it to be a committee of the whole, or do we want it to be a committee in part? Um, I got um, one response that I recall. So I don't have that. And so, you know, this, this is the opportunity maybe where, at least maybe for the next meeting, we can actually put it on there with clarity saying, what kind of committee are we, are we um, going to form? Whether it's a committee of the whole or a committee in part. The, um, and the committee would be charged with looking at all the instruments, including this one, including the NISBA one, including whatever other ones they, 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 they can find or come up with. And then ultimately, ultimately make a recommendation to the board for it to be filed at, at, at the appropriate time. Um, the process needs to be started now. So the committee can't, you, you can't do it now necessarily we've been talking about this since November. So um, if you, people would get back to it with respect to the type of committee, that's not an issue. Um, so I don't know if there's anything okay, to Can be. I just respond to something my position regarding the committee is clear because I've sent multiple correspondence um, urging our board to form a committee to well, do I'm that. Well, I'm not saying the forming of the committee. I'm, right. saying, I'm not saying the forming of the committee. I'm saying the type of committee. Well, the type of committee, I recommend that it's far to coordinate seven people. <coughs> if we have committee, just like anything else, all three people, like our policy, like our advocacy, if that comes back with a recommendation, that would be great. Realistically, it should be a combination of new members, you know, who uh, are ongoing and older members who have been here and have experienced other tools and know more about this than some of us. So a nice mix of, you know, the old and the new. But um, so my position is, um, I think it's sufficient to have three people because it's easier to coordinate times and get this moving so that we meet the deadline this time of September 10th and not bypass it again. Um, the other, so that's my position. Okay, well that's I'm sorry, and that's kind of what I wanted at the, the, the last meeting so I could put it on there clearly as an action item. So, okay. it's, so not, it's not um, so much the forming of the committee. Oh, yeah, okay. hold on, hold on. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted. Thank you. On the other hand, um, the 600 pro is a prorated um, amount that you just revealed because we asked the video of why it was 600 would go back to 1800 next year if we were to select this. And obviously, what you're trying to see here. You know, there's a learning curve for all of us. You know, Dr. Adams, us, all of us will, have, will get used to a new tool. So we're pretty much selecting something that will cost next year $1,800. Um, and then, um, just again, I'm not clear if it's coming out of consulting budget or what budget, but it's still money that's being spent. Um, and just, you know, wanted to comment on the 600 is this year only. And if, you know, if you would amend this to actually specify the year, it would be a lot more clear because it doesn't say for what year. Teresa? Just a quick question on the sure. 1800 because I noticed in the email and I reviewed the video that it also uh, states it's a billable BOCES aid. It's aidable the to BOCES. Aid, what what I, does that look like with the $1,800? The BOCES aid is for the, is for the training. And it doesn't split up because it's all one, it's all one bill. I don't know. I haven't, you know well, and is it a one-time fee or do you get it for future use? So we don't know about that right now. As far as what's a one -time? So if we go, like if we use the same one next year, would it still be aid aidable for BOCES? I presume so. BOCES is yearly. But, yeah. Yes. Well, you just yeah. said it was for training, so I didn't know if we get trained once and then we don't get that bill. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I, I don't profess to know. So we don't know. Okay. We get BOCES aid generally every year for okay. um, Any other questions? I just think with respect to the 600, I mean, you, you know, you hate to spend money, but you're like penny wise, pound foolish at some point. You know, this is. Um, and I think that if we're going to try a tool that does cost eighteen hundred, let's try it where it's only six hundred. It's like it's like it's like a nominal trial phase. Um, and again, you know, the electronic nature of it is, is well beyond right. compared to anything else we've seen so far. Maybe the committee will find something else. But okay, so anything else? Uh, I will call the vote. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Opposed. Opposed. Okay. So so um, you're taking minutes. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Okay, so that's Okay, so 2.05.
Chair, entertain a motion to accept that as so stated. So moved. Second, Lisa. Discussion? Discussion. Chair, which one this is? Yes, the rescinding of the law of the kindergarten pilot program. Uh, yes, I rescind because the vote was stated wrongly in the original um, minutes of January. January 20th. Uh, I rescind that vote, yes. The vote, I'm not rescinding my actual vote, I'm rescinding what is posted. So. Okay, so I'll, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Did everybody say aye? Everybody? Yes. 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 All right, 2.06. Chairman, did a motion to accept 2.06 as so stated? So moved. Second. Same. Thank you. Discussion? Hold. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? I'm sorry, that's uh, rescinding the RTA. I don't rescind that. The vote was for. Okay, so so you're voting yay? For that? I'm sorry, 2.06 is uh, for teacher association MOA. Um, again, I'm rescinding an inaccurate vote on the previous minutes. So aye. 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 2.07, Chairman Fanny Bush, 2.07 has to say. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Sorry. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Is everybody an aye? Say so yes, three standing an inaccurate vote. So 2.07 is an aye? Amani, yes, yes ma'am. Okay. 2.08, approval of pre kindergarten. Chairman Fanny Bush, to accept 2.08 as so stated. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I heard an aye from everybody. Am I correct? Excellent. Okay, 2.09, Chair, if you wish to accept 2.09, I so stated. So moved. Second. Excellent. Uh, all those in favor? <laughs> aye. Aye. I was waiting. Aye. 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 Everybody aye? Opposed? Abstentions? 2.10, Chair, if you wish to accept 2.10, as so stated. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Everybody's an aye. Excellent. Okay. 2.29. Two point two nine. Chair, we're going to motion to accept 2.29 as I stated. So moved. Second. Wow, you make it real easy. That's a good discussion. Discussion? Thank you. Sorry, you all have to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> discussion? Okay, so I have a question um, anyone can answer. It's regarding the order of the snow days, so we're taking them out of the February break, and we're taking them um, starting the Friday, and then the Thursday, and then the Wednesday, from what I see. Yes. So my question on that is, um, I'm guessing by, if we come back from a break, Friday is usually a slow day. Uh, isn't taking it away, um, so, so we would still be off the next, not me, but Students would still be off Monday and Tuesday um, and lose the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Whereas Monday and Tuesday might be busier instruction days. You guys might agree or disagree as opposed. So was there any consideration to do it the other way, to take it from the earlier part of the week? And why aren't you that? Monday's a holiday. But Monday's yeah. a federal holiday. So, so, so Monday's a federal holiday. So thanks for explaining. That's what, President's? Yes. President's yes. Day. And Tuesday's not a consideration? So if we would have. Uh, Taking it from Tuesday first, or then we would have been off Monday and then Wednesday, oh, Thursday, Friday. So thanks, so that clarifies why we went that one. Sorry. Thank you. That's all. I have other questions for Brian. I've heard a lot of people um, talk about why are we starting with the February break? Can't we start with other days later on? And why take away from the February break first? Can that be like second or third or fourth down? You know, Sunday number two or Sunday number three. I mean, can I see this? Sure. My, my understanding is that, um, you know, a lot of times you take it away from Memorial Day first. However, it's late in the year. So the days that you give back, in, in a sense, are less valuable to the students in late May than they would be in February when they're well, in the thick of curriculum. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's why the decision was made. I mean, Dr. Adams is probably Correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're, you're right, Mr. Kern. Well, no, no, I, it has, but I think that there's been more, you know, more vocal. Well, what about the superintendent's day on March 9th? 
why is that one not one of the surveys? And I just think taking away from the February break, I've heard a lot of complaints about why are you taking away from the February break? Is there any other surveys that can be taken away? It, you know, there's March 9th. Is there anything in the um, March 30th to April 6th? Does that coincide with religious? That's Easter, Passover. They're both. The, that's the Easter and Passover? Yes, Passover starts the 30th. It's Easter on Passover and Passover. Okay. Week. It starts March 30th. March 30th, it starts. Passover does. Passover. And it ends when? Following Saturday. Oh, so it's April. So, uh, so I'm right. it's Saturday, is that not something? That's a contractual that day. Okay. So we couldn't take that away. But you prefer to lose the, the Memorial Friday last, not before days from the February break? Yes, the, if, if we were to take days away from the February break, that presupposes that the snow days occurred prior to February. Okay. And this year, we had our three snow days that occurred after that. So that first break in February would be intact in terms of this year. Um, and, and, and I heard a lot of folks say that they really prefer to have a week off for February if possible. The last 12 years, it's been seven times we've had the week off, and then five times it's been less than a week off. But in order to try to get a full week in February, then we have fewer snow days around the Memorial Day holiday. In fact, we just have one with this calendar. So this calendar would not be the best for what's actually happened this year. Okay, I know you gave me the answer last year, but I forgot. Some people have said to me, why not um, do the reverse, where you have some days built in, and then if you don't have the snow days, they go back to the, to the students? And I remember there was a reason why we don't do that in this district, because I know they do that in other districts. Yeah. Yes, there are two other, it looks like two other school districts in the county that do it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just something that historically we've done here, where we show the full calendar and then if we have snow days, you know, we, we lose those vacation days or holidays. Is there a benefit to doing it that way versus or it's just tradition? I, I, I don't know if there's a, a real cogent reason why it's one over the other. Okay. Then that's a good way of doing it, and I seem to be pleased and then this is and, and a lot of times I, I get questions from the board in terms of what are other school districts doing. Yeah, that's about uh, that's, that's the, the year. Our, our calendar aligns almost identically with BOCES except for the snow days. Uh, six of the districts have the full week in February and five of the districts have the same days off in April. Not identical. Some, <clears throat> some have a few days off before the 30th. They take the week off, the full week off, and then they don't have the week off. For Passover? Right. Are they allowed to do that? Yes. <coughs> so it's not a problem? Correct. Oh. But our, our, our calendar, except for the snow days, matches with BOCES. Mm -hmm. Six of the eight are, are the same for the February break, and five of the eight are nearly identical for the April break. And the snow days are all over the place other than one, two, three, four, four of the eight, or four of the six school districts that have the week off for February start taking off the 23rd and the 22nd and the 21st. So four of the six have uh, the snow days set up like that. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, yeah. so I'll call a question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you. I have something to do before we close. Please share this. I don't have anything else on the agenda. This is public okay. participation. Public participation so, as to any school that. district business. This session will last a half an hour. Your third version. Wait, about 30 minutes. Wait, 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 wait. I think we're getting some information. Can I have a chance to look at it? I just want to make sure Dr. Alice has a question. Everybody does.
Okay, so if there's no time to really share this, I've emailed this report. Um, and the committee did not meet last week because of the snow days. Wait, so it's not on the agenda, that's why. True, but I need you to take note of that because there are time sensitive items. The budget, the executive budget will be closed on April 1st. There's enough information here. If the district would like to post a statement, similar to the one posted today, there's enough information to help um, have a statement. There's also a copy of other statements that came out of organization. So I stapled it all in order I don't take much of your time. Please review this because action needs to be taken if we're going to within the next week, so definitely before our next meeting. Um, the, the advocacy meeting was postponed a week because there was no one to attend except me due to those two snow days. People's plans have changed. Matt was un unavailable. Oh. Yes. So I was the only one available and obviously not able to, uh, to meet. So, um, all right, we're so meeting this third This is of education acts. Is this, is this a time sensitive matter? All the budget the items, yeah, all the budget items are, um, are urgent. Please take a look. If we're going to post a statement like other districts did, I have a formula that was shared. You were there uh, at the meeting last night with um, Regent Johnson that would help us with the agency. And a statement made by all the associations, NICIT, um, the, the Superintendent's Association, the Parent Associations, all of them, NISPA, they're all, um, this is a statement that they made. So that can be utilized to make any action before the budget is closed. I also shared with Dr. Adams HR 610 to the Federal um, Act. I gave him uh, after the blackout. So, uh, yes, no, we, had, we had an email back and forth you and I with respect to. Um, right. So everybody yeah, so needs to, if we're going to advocate against that, we need to uh, spring into action. Thank you. Okay. Uh, public participation as to any school district business. This will last 30 minutes. Uh, if you have a question or comment with respect to any school district business, please step up to the podium, state your name, address school affiliation, you have three minutes to address the board. Um, pursuant to policies 12, 30, 14, 30, 40, please do not address any comment for any in particular person or employee or student of the district. Stephen Marks, uh, I live in Slopesbury, teach high school. Uh, I had a whole thing made up here. I'm not going to go through it uh, because of the answers that we got uh, from Deputy Walker uh, about special ed. Uh, I'm a parent of two special ed students. Uh, my son is uh, in first grade. He is in the BOCES program at George Miller. Uh, he's been in the CABIS program since uh, early intervention, right after two years old. Uh, I emailed the director of special ed uh, for Rampo Central, and that person recommended to me the CABIS program. You know, as a parent, when I got the diagnosis, I had really no idea. Um, we did our due diligence, we researched it, and the program is fantastic. Um, it's really changed his life, and it's really given us some hope. Um, and I'm, I'm thrilled we found it. Uh, I hope that you guys continue to support it. It seems like you're going to, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, I don't know where he's going to be next year. Uh, I don't know if he's ready to move up, ready or not to. Uh, I'm glad that we're going to have a big stake into that. Uh, I appreciate Monty's support. Uh, Dr. McGann, excuse me, uh, and, and the rest of the board members. I know you were at the uh, set the meeting uh, where I was at. I uh, appreciate the questions. Uh, kids like mine need advocates, uh, and you pay now or you pay later. Um, I heard uh, Mr. Falco say, uh, Penny Wise and Pound Foolish. I hope we keep that philosophy in terms of special ed. Um, I see it's only like a $200,000 difference, which I think is like 0.015% of the total budget, which is like me losing a quarter in my, uh, in my couch. Um, if you guys can do it better, I'm all for that. If you guys can do it cheaper, I'm all for that. Um, and I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, done. I suppose that portion of the meeting. Uh, any no. comments, Dr. Adams? No. Uh, Chair, I motion to adjourn. I'll make that. Second. Really? Yeah. You're going to mess it up. <laughs> Sorry. The last one. You're going to mess up. Right. 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 Right.